Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. I've got what I think is a pretty interesting project today. It may go into a couple days, but for you it'll be in a short period of time. Uh, I've got this handle, which is the speed control for my forklift, my forklift project. And it works okay, it's just too short. And it's the original speed lever from a Cub Cadet, and it's normally on the dash underneath the steering wheel, pretty easy reach. But because of the way I've built the forklift and had to build the forklift, I couldn't use it in its original position. Power steering was in the way, so I moved it to the side of the dash, and that makes the handle pretty far away and pretty short. So this has a splined bore, fits over a splined shaft, and the project is to build a new handle, longer handle. You know, I thought about just extending this, but that, what would be the challenge in doing that? This is cast, um, cast zinc maybe, or Zamac, or pot metal. Uh, it's not aluminum. It's chrome plated, uh, but I think it's, I think it's pot metal. I think it's a zinc alloy. Uh, now I do believe it has a steel bore here. Um, I'm sure it does. Uh, it wouldn't, a, a zinc or a zinc pot metal alloy would not hold up to the stresses of a fine spline like like this bore has. This bore has a 24 tooth female version, so 24 groove spline that's a nominal half inch um, major diameter. So uh, we're going to duplicate that. I'm going to use the shaper. Uh, there's multiple ways to do it. I mean, I thought about just doing it on the mill, and you could do it on the mill by holding a bore and using the quill to push a cutter through the bore, index it, do it again, and that might actually be the easiest way. <laughs> I don't think that'll be quite as much fun as using the shaper to cut the internal spline. So, so this is where the handle fits and is the speed control. You can change the angle of it, of course. And I've got, this is a jack screw which pushes the handle off of the, the spline shaft. You can see the shaft is, it's nominal half inch diameter. It's about 4.490 major diameter. It's got 24 splines and it's about a little over three quarters of an inch, 0.8 0.8 inches, 0.806 or something like that. So three quarters of an inch, a little over three quarters of an inch long, half inch diameter, 24 yeah. splines. So inside the handle has corresponding splines or grooves. Okay, so we need to duplicate this so that we can build a new handle which will fit over this spline shaft and extend longer. So you can see how the handle is pretty far away from the operator seat and I have to lean over to reach the handle. So I want to have a handle which is you know about twice as long. We'll come up here to the level of the steering wheel. There you can maybe get a better view of the spline bore. Now this shaft has a groove in it for the set screw. When the handle goes on, that set screw goes in that groove and keep it from keeps it from coming off. All right. In order to get this off originally, I had to drill and tap it for a bolt to use as a jack screw to get the 
handle off of the shaft originally. So using the calipers, I'm able to measure the, the major diameter in here. And between opposite side grooves, it's measuring, you know, 0 0.489, 0 0.488. So, which, wh when I measure the spline shaft, it's, it's about the same. I don't have a set of gauge pins, which if I did, that would be, that'd be swell. <laughs> so we'll see if I um, can do it this way. So I'm getting about 0 Four six nine. So that's our target. The minor diameter is point four seven zero. So we'll target that. And we have twenty four splines. So that puts them fifteen degrees apart. It also means 24 grooves. Okay, how do you diagram. cut splines with the shaper? And this is the basic tool. Now, unfortunately, this particular tool is a little bit too large. But this tool moves back and forth in the shaper, and there's a cutter here and you can have that go into the bore and cut the grooves for the spline. Unfortunately this particular cutter is way too big. I mean I think it's three quarters. Yeah it's almost it's it's three almost three quarters. Uh, so that would be okay for a larger bore, but for our half inch bore, we need a cutter which is substantially smaller than that. So this is this is the tooling I use for I've used for cutting internal keyways. And it's the it's the normal tool holder for holding cutter bits in the shaper like this. So you can change the angle of the bit however you want. Here is actually is actually a cutter used for cutting a gear, uh, involute gear. So that's what that particular cutter was used for. So the bore of this tool head is five-eighths of an inch. So we need something similar to this, five-eighths inch shaft with a shoulder, and then a diameter here of less than half an inch. It has to be, I mean, we want it to be as stiff as possible, so we want it you know, relatively large, as large as we can get inside the spline, right? That'd be 20 thousandths on the diameter. All right, so we've got to go to the lathe and make a, a tool, and then we'll also make the blank that we'll use for 
the head of the handle. We're going to make a head inch diameter. We'll do a spline in three quarters of an inch of it and then we'll weld a longer handle to it. All right, the second piece we need will be the hub for the new handle. This will be what we cut the splines in. So we only need about an inch and a half. So that's good right there. Touch off again. Okay. Take twenty more. Six three eight. So we only need about thirteen, well, say fifteen thousandths, give us a couple thousandths clearance. I'm going to take five off the radius here, Maybe ten off the diameter. We'll sneak up to the where we need to be. Point six three one, a little bit large still. So we've got six thousandths to come off. I'm gonna go eight. Give me two thousandths clearance. So that'll be four on the radius. Let's do another touch off here. There's so much back, backlash in my cross slide nut that I almost have to do a touch off for each pass just to make sure 
I don't miss my mark. So I'm taking four thousandths off the radius or eight thousandths. So this should bring me two thousandths under my target. do need to center, drill, and then tap in the end here. Let's do that. Where are my boys? Come here, Brew Brew. There's my Brew Brew. Yeah. My good boy. And there's my butchy boy. What you guys doing? Butchy was, butchy was outside barking and I went, looked outside, I don't know, three times. I could not see. I mean, it's getting dark. I could not see what he was barking at. But he obviously was not happy about something out there. So he was at the gate barking across the driveway. So what do you think, Brew Brew? What was Butchie barking at? Butchie, Brew Brew came in the shop a couple times, I guess to tell me that Butchie was barking. I don't know. <laughs> and you see Butchie wedging his way in here between me and Brutus. So yeah, come here, come here. You're good boys. My good puppies. My good puppies. So they went over and were sniffing at the dog food barrel. Like, Daddy, the dishes are full of food. As I've said before several times, there are meaty bits in the kibble, and that's what they pick out. They're pretty spoiled. So, are you spoiled? You're a spoiled puppy. You're a spoiled puppy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You like my new shirt? <laughs> All right, so I got to get a tap and we're gonna tap this. So let me go do that and be right back. So before you say anything, it looks like it's off center. It is off center with the handle, but that's because the tap is off center. And I'll show you why. The tap follower is actually on the end of the tap.
So you can see why it appears to be off-center is because it is off-center on this handle. And that's just because that's how this tap set deals with the, this tap handle. An inexpensive tap set, actually it's a Sears Craftsman set that I've had for decades literally for decades, but my other tap handles that I have are too big to use on the lathe here. There's not enough clearance. I do have a bottoming tap here, but I don't think I'm going to need to use it. I've got enough thread in here for the intended purpose, which is just the retaining bolt and the tool holder. So I think I'm going to call that good. All right, I've got the workpiece turned around here and uh, centered it up here. Again, I'm yeah, about a thou, about a thou out of alignment, but that's pretty, pretty close, so close enough for this effort. And uh, so the next step is to turn this down to about, uh, we're gonna go to 0.40. Uh, four tenths of an inch. Got to be under half an inch. That'll give me a little bit of clearance to work with. So, uh, so we'll start turning this down here and uh, get to where we need to be.
So, let's see where we are, 0.47, going to 0 0.40, so I've got 70 thousandths off the diameter, 35 thousandths off the uh, radius. Alright, so I've got an issue with the tool getting too close to the center, uh, so I'm going to change the angle of the tool. Uh, which will allow me to get in here, but I won't be able to, I'll have to change it back in order to clean up the face of this flange. So I'm still just ten thousandths over. Uh, the exact diameter is not certainly not critical. So. This should be our last pass. Pretty close to point four zero. So that puts us right on the money. Okay, I'm going to change the angle of the tool and come in and clean up this shoulder here. So you can see the shoulder is stepped because of restrictions on tool angle. Okay, that'll work. All right, so that's our basic tool holder blank. We still need to mount the uh, cutter inside the, the, in the, at the end of this tool. So we'll go to the mill, we'll drill a hole through, and then we'll make a cutter bit. Then we'll drill and tap the end here for a set screw to hold the, the cutter bit.
All right, next two operations. All right, so I've got the tool clamped in a V-block here. I'm going to find the center of it. We're going to drill through hole for our um, cutter bit. All right, so this is what I'm going to make the cutter out of. It's the shank of a tap. It's high speed steel. It fits in there nicely. And we need to go back to the lathe and we'll drill and tap this quarter 20 for a set screw. This is a nice, sharp, uh, two flute gun tap, as I call it. Uh, it pushes the, pushes the chips ahead, which in a blind hole like this is not the best idea actually, but the tap cuts so nicely. I can feel it cutting threads there. So we'll go in there like that. So we need to cut the necessary uh, clearances and angle on the end of this. So I'm going to go do that. Need a little more clearance angle there. I think I'm going to do that with a diamond file and uh, go from there, then hone it.
so we can expose as much of the cutter bit as we need. So we, the cutter bit only needs to protrude the depth of the splines. I'm going to measure them again to make sure I understand the depth. But w with the set screw, we can adjust the, the amount of stick out of the cutter. And uh, as long as uh, as long as this fits inside the bore, we should be good. We'll be good. So it only needs to stick out enough to cut the cut the splines, which is t uh, ten or twenty thousandths. So okay, uh, we'll have to align this. It's not completely aligned right now. The cutter needs to be aligned with the axis. It's a little bit off, and of course. Obviously, it needs to be on the bottom side because the tool's going to move like this. So we'll rotate it. Making progress. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up at this point. We'll come back next time and finish up the project. We've got the tool made, so all that's left is to mount the hub or the barrel of the, the internal spline component in a collet in the spin indexer and put that on the mount that to the table of the shaper and set the tool up and cut the splines. So that'll be interesting. Never done it before, so we'll see how it goes. But we'll do all that next time. Thanks for watching. See you guys then.